All right, so we think about how professional cyclists train. It's very different to what normal people do. They generally do massive hours in the winter, which maybe you wouldn't no normally do. And then after that, they basically go and do a bit of intensity. Then they do a stage race, do some maintenance intensity stage race, maintenance intensity stage race, and either the spring classics, the Giro or the Tour is their big goal. And before that, they may have an altitude camp, but generally it's just these stage races. And you may think, okay, but when you look at the literature, is this actually a good way of training? Or is it just like, this is what tradition has done, it's always got good results, and we should continue. So anyway, what is actually really interesting is this new study that's come out recently by Ronstad. Now, you may know Ronstad, he's a bit big name, he has a lot of stuff on strength, he also does it on 3015s as well. And this is all about speed skates, but it's basically very similar to cycling. So I'll go through the study now because it's actually quite interesting and maybe shows why stage races, which are generally about seven days um, for world tour level, are really, really useful for intensity. So this is using super, super um, elite cross-country skiers. So you can see VO2 max of 70. Obviously, in cross-country skiing, the VO2 is always higher because they use their whole body. Um, and you can see they had a time match period with the usual training. So they weren't doing more hours. And you think generally in a stage race, you probably might do more hours, but not necessarily. Um, and it was basically, the aim was to investigate the acute physiological responses, including a time at over 90% of VO2 max, which is like, you know, super, super hard uh, in intensity, super high intensity, sorry, in hard intervals. Um, so what they did is they had six days, um, sorry, before the six day high intensity block and following five days recovery after the high intensity block, they basically did their tests. Um, so what was the result? So the block group, which was the people who did six days in a row instead of doing intervals, um, they had an improvement in their maximal one minute velocity um, achieved during the VO2 max test. So you would guess, I would say like that's like a ramp test in cycling. So they got to a high level on a ramp test um, and also their velocity at four millimolar. Now, four, four millimolar um, per litre of blood lactate is what people often use as a proxy for threshold. So, you know, a way of showing threshold despite Obviously, that depending athlete to athlete, it can be a good way uh, to do it simply. And again, you can see there was an increase in that. So, you know, your threshold's gone up. Uh, in the sub-maximal exercise, the block displayed a large reduction in respiratory exchange ratio, um, lower lactate concentration, heart rate, and also it felt easier. Um, so I guess what is the conclusion? Well, again, well-trained cross-country skiers, um, the block periodization, so when they do six days in a row, had superior changes in indicators of endurance performance compared with the um, with the control. So I guess the point is this, is like, is this worth it? And I think your argument would be yes, because, you know, you get a really big physiological response to the high intensity that is given. Now, I think that the most interesting thing, and realistically, the key, um, key thing to think about this is just the risk versus reward ratio, because you know, it's going to be more risky doing six days of intensity in a row. You know, block periodization is quite um, quite known in that sense. Um, you also have to think, you know, you don't want to be overtrained. You don't want to, any of that stuff. So I think what that really means uh, in reality is that it is risk. But we can see here, which is what I wanted to find, which was the block versus um, sort of control. And what you can see here is that the, the total hours were um, or less for the control, but the I think believe the trim score they were trying to get sort of similar ish. Um, but what you'll see here is actually the trim score is less, which is like a, a version of TSS. But what you will see is that the time spent at high intensity is really, really big for the block periodization compared to the control group. The control group is what you'd expect 17 hours, low intensity, medium intensity, an hour. Um, but for the block periodization, it was really, really hard. Um, and again, that's probably more similar to a stage race, not necessarily because some stage races can be quite easy. You spend a lot of time in zone one, but even so, I think that's an interesting point uh, that we can see. And the rest of this is more speed skating um, relevance than anything else. But I think it goes to show that, in my opinion, what people maybe could do um, as amateurs, if you know you don't have access to stage races, is create your own stage race. You know, let's say you've got a crit on Tuesday, you've got a crit on Wednesday, you've got a crit on Thursday. Or, you know, you could ride before, try and do some intervals on the first one. So you race Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe have, well, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a Friday off. And then Saturday do a race, Sunday do a race. And that is very similar. Okay, it's not exactly the same. It's not six days straight. But again, it's that big boost um, of high intensity anaerobic efforts, which you're not going to get if you do traditional training. And maybe, you know, you could incorporate that into your training routine and see if that has a big blow. For me, I think block periodization I've really enjoyed sometimes, but I think I've also messed it up where I've done too much and not recovered sufficiently, which I think is obviously a big risk. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. 
uh, about training techniques in speed skaters and, oh, sorry, cross-country skiers, and how this also may be relevant uh, to cycling.